Hi, I'm Alana, and this country is one of the three Baltic states, located on the eastern shore of the Baltic Sea, known as the Land of Blue Lakes, because it has about 12,000 rivers and 3,000 small lakes. The best time to visit Latvia is in the summer, from June to mid-September. Welcome to US Ed, your unique way to see the world. Does that sound good to you? Watch the video to find out more about what Latvia has to offer. Click the like button or, even better, smash that subscribe button. Thanks a lot! Our first stop takes us to Aglona, a place steeped in spirituality and history. Located near Latvia's borders with Russia in the northeastern region of the country, it's home to the breathtaking Aglona Basilica, a significant pilgrimage site for Latvia's Catholics. Additionally, you can visit the nearby Devil's Lake and the Madeleine Castle Mount, two of the most picturesque places in the country. Another reason for Aglona's reputation is that it's home to the Basilica of the Assumption, the largest Catholic church in Latvia. The basilica stands tall, surrounded by lush greenery, offering a serene escape for those seeking a connection with divinity. The annual Assumption Day pilgrimage attracts thousands, making Aglona a must-visit destination. Each summer, a large number of tourists are drawn to the area by its picturesque attractiveness. Next on our list is Jermala, a coastal resort town on the Baltic, known for its sandy beaches and charming wood architecture. Since the late 18th century, Jermala has been a famous spa town. It's easy to see why this vacation town has been popular for so long. It has beautiful Art Nouveau houses, white sand beaches, pine trees, and great restaurants. If you want to have fun, the beach and the one-of-a-kind spa, with its tempting menu of mud packs and massages, are great places to go. But Jermala is also a great place to get back to nature. You can walk along the miles of pine-lined beach or look at the pretty wooden summer houses. A lot of the older buildings look like gingerbread houses. Kimmery National Park is close by and has a strange scenery. Our adventure now takes us to Ventspils, a city with the best-preserved Livonian Order castle in the country, stands tall above the cobblestones of the old town. The castle has pretty yellow washed walls and is one of the busiest ports in the Baltic area. The city is known as the flower capital of Latvia, and it has a lovely market area and old houses on Skola Street. It lives up to its name in the spring, when flower beds and bulb gardens bloom all over town and along the seaside promenades by the port. The port is an important part of the city's history and it can be fun to watch ships come and go. This place also has the Seaside Open Air Museum, which is without a question Ventspils' most beautiful spot. A narrow gauge train is available for visitors to ride, the City Beach and the Ventspils International Radio Astronomy Center, which used to be a Soviet radio astronomy center, are also interesting places to visit. In the summer, people love to sunbathe, play volleyball and kite surf. Ventspils is great for people who like to take long walks by the water. One of the best walks is from the South Pier to a green and white lighthouse that stands alone. Along the way, you can see a lot of the Baltic Sea. Next is a town that transports us back to the medieval era. Chassis welcomes us next. The town feels like it's in a fairy tale because of the old castle ruins, cobblestone streets, and beautiful park. There are two houses at Chase's Castle. Knights from Latvia built the first one in 1214, it's called Wenden Castle. The second castle is a country house from the 18th century that looks like a castle. Families of German counts used to live in this home. It is now Chassis's history and art museum and the original fitness cycle interior is on display, making it one of the most interesting places to see in Latvia. After explore the castle, stroll through Kazu Grava and witness the charm that makes Chassis one of must-see places. 
Our journey continues into the untouched beauty of Gaja National Park. Known for its caves, cliffs, rock formations, outcroppings of colorful sandstone, and unique natural and cultural sites, Gaja is a haven for nature enthusiasts. The park reserve is the biggest in Lafia and covers 900 square kilometers and is in the middle of the Gaja River. The park has more than 500 different sites, such as castles, churches, mills, estates, ancient villages, and many other architectural, historical, and archaeological sites. There's a vertical wind tunnel, a cable car jump, the Segolda bobsleigh track, and other very exciting things to do outside that will really take your breath away. To see a lot of sights at once, you should plan a trip that lasts more than one day. Next is the biggest point in Lafia, Cape Kolka. It is where the Baltic Sea meets the calm waves of the Riga Gulf. It used to be a closed-off Soviet military post, but now it's a beautiful beach town in the middle of nowhere. For the best views, people can climb up the wooden bird viewing tower near Lake Canaris. The wooden house is made like a barrel and has a view of the water. The Livonians live in this area. They are a small Finnic ethnic group that originally lived in northern Latvia and southwestern Estonia. While our visit here may be short, the beauty of this place, with its windswept landscapes, is bound to leave a lasting impression on your heart. Now, let's explore Jelgava, a city with a rich history and a touch of modernity. It's famous for its long past and beautiful buildings. The Jelgava Palace, once the home of the Dukes of Courland and Semigalia, is one of the most popular places to visit. The palace was built in the 18th century and has a beautiful Baroque facade. It is now a museum with displays about the palace's past. The Holy Trinity Church, the Jelgava History and Art Museum, and the impressive Lialupa Bridge are some of the other must places to visit in Jelgava. Admire the architecture, stroll through the charming market square, and revel in the lively atmosphere. One of the most interesting places in the country is Liapaya, which is both a port and a vacation town. It's located on the Baltic Sea and has a very interesting mix of buildings. It was once the capital of Lafia and is known as the city where the wind is born. There are many beaches with fine white sand and there are also some interesting military history artifacts in the area. In Liapaya, you can see old churches and the remains of military castles, among other historical sites. Also, Liapaya used to be one of the most important navy towns in the old Soviet Union. In the mostly empty suburb of Karosta, which used to be a military zone and looks very disturbing now, jumbled bunkers and red brick manage were built as part of a naval station for Russian Tsar Alexander III around the turn of the 20th century. Liapaya has turned its dark past into an interesting show with the Karosta Prison Museum. Without a question, it's one of the most interesting places in the Baltics to visit. Next on our journey is Sigolda, a town surrounded by hills, castles, and misty woodlands. The medieval castle ruins of the Livonian order are one of the most famous places to visit in Sigolda. Tereda Castle, which is like Bran in Romania, is built on top of the hills around town. It has keeps, bulwarks, and crumbling crenellations. Of course, there are the misty forests and trees of the Gaja Valley, a real gem of the country's wilderness with winding rivers and hiking trails with caves all over them. Take a look at the huge caves and rolling hills of the Gutmana system. In the meantime, Sigolda is full of cherry trees and pretty royal buildings from before Latvia became independent. In the winter, you can ski and go Nordic walks. Play music. The Gutmanus Cave is another must-see. It is a natural wonder with a mineral-rich spring that has been drawing people in for hundreds of years. The writings on the walls of this cave are very famous. The Tarzan's Adventure Park is a great place for people who love exciting things. 
There are activities that range from easy to hard at the park in Sigulda, which has more than 100 challenges. Finally, we arrive at our main destination, the heart of Latvia, Riga. There are many levels to the capital of Latvia, which is protected by UNESCO. This vibrant city straddles the Dogava River. Old Riga is a good place to start. Almost all of Old Town is cut off to traffic, so you can take your time walking through this area and learning about the history and building sites. The twisting cobblestone streets will make you feel like you've been moved back in time several hundred years. Everyone can be charmed by beautiful Old Town cute medieval homes, a rows of brightly colored homes and church towers the size of skyscrapers. One of the most important spiritual centers in Latvia is the country's biggest church, which also holds organ and religious music concerts. The grand building's history goes back to 1211, when the first stone was laid for a temple meant to represent victory in the capture of Livonia. The cathedral's current inner plan is the result of work done to fix it up in the 1800s. It's mostly white and has a rather stark and austere Gothic design. It has a few long, narrow windows with colorful stained glass and some fancy wood carvings that finish off the look. You should see the Riga Cathedral and the Gothic House of the Blackheads. The St. Peter's Church stands out in cityscapes with its tall tower topped with a rooster. At the moment, it is a leathern church that holds daily meetings. It has a viewing deck on its clear spire, which is 71 meters high, and gives a beautiful view of the scenery. When it was first built in 1209, the church was the main place of worship for wealthy people in medieval society. Inside the pink brick building, the halls are sparsely decorated with simple wood designs and historical inscriptions. You can also take the lift to the top of the church to get a view of the whole city. One of the most famous buildings in Riga is the Freedom Monument, which was built as a tribute to all the soldiers who died in the Latvian War of Independence. On top of the 42-meter steel base is a 9-meter sculpture of freedom, a young woman holding three stars to represent the three culture and historical areas of Latvia. At the base of the statue are a number of bas reliefs that show historical scenes and the most important social values. And there you have it, our journey through the 15 best places to visit in Latvia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your favorite Latvian destination in the comments below. Until next time, this is Alana signing off. Happy travels!